أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه I seek refuge in Allah from the cursed devil uh, Iblis with the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful um, I praise Allah to him belongs all the praise I seek his assistance and I seek his forgiveness and I give prayers and salams upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon his companions his family and those who follow in his footsteps until the day of judgment. Ameen. Today, our topic is also from Sahih al-Bukhari, whereas Al-Imam al-Bukhari mentions the category of washing your feet whilst wearing your shoes. Washing your feet whilst wearing your shoes and not wiping on your shoes. He mentioned his chain of narration to Ubaid ibn Juraij, who was a companion of Abdullah ibn Umar. Ubaid ibn Juraij said that he said to Abdullah ibn Umar, O oh, Aba Abdul Rahman, I saw you doing four things I did not see any of your companions doing. I saw you do four things which I did not see any of your other companions doing. So Abdullah ibn Umar asked him, what are these four things, Ya Juraj? He said, I saw you not touching any of the corners of the Kaaba except the two Yemeni corners, which refer to the Yemeni corner and the black stone. And I saw you wearing a Ni'alu Sabtiya, the Ni'alu Sibtiya, the Sibti shoes which are a kind of sandal that are made of leather um, that do not have any fur. And I saw you using saffron to color your hair, meaning your gray hair. So his hair was yellow, was colored yellow. And I saw you in Mecca when it's time for Hajj, you wear your ihram on the eighth day of the Hijjah. And you do not wear your ihram like the others do, which they put on their ihram on the first day of the Hijjah. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu responded by saying, the pillars that I touch on the Kaaba, um, I did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam touch any of the pillars except for the two Yemeni pillars, which are the Yemeni corner and the black stone. And he said, and about the shoes, the Sipti shoes, I saw the Prophet ﷺ wearing shoes that did not have any fur. And he used to make wudu in them. And he used to make wudu in them, meaning with them on. So I love to wear them. Abdullah ibn Umar said, so I love to wear them. And he said, uh, and about the yellow or coloring my hair with saffron, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam color his hair with it, using it. So I love to color my hair using it. وَأَمَّا الْإِهْلَالِ And the issue of uh, putting on my ihram or beginning ihram on the eighth day. I did not see the Prophet ﷺ put on his ihram until the eighth day, until that day. So in this hadith, um, Ubaid ibn Juraj is asking Abdullah ibn Umar as if he is unhappy or displeased or um, kind of, um, uh, you know, displeased or not happy with the way Abdullah bin Umar is doing these things because nobody else is doing them the way he does them. So the way that he's asking Abdullah bin Umar, it's as if he's uh, skeptical. So Abdullah bin Umar allows him to finish his question, is calm, and then answers him calmly. This is, in, in this is a lesson for us who are teachers or those who are callers, of, uh, callers to, to the deen, followers of the Prophet 
that even though a person may ask a question in a manner that is disrespectful, we still should allow them to ask that question so that we can give them an answer that is conducive for them. And Abdullah ibn Umar answered the question thoroughly as well. So the first thing that he was asked about are the corners that he touched on the Kaaba. Um, there is a hadith where Muawiyah radiallahu anhu would touch all four corners of the Kaaba. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu told him, no, don't touch all the four corners because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa only touched two of the corners. So um, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu told him, if it's just the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't touch, this doesn't mean that we can't touch because he didn't tell us not to. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that with, uh, with the Prophet وسلم, there was a, uh, an example and a, and a good guide as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. So Muawiyah discontinued to touch the other, uh, the other two corners. And Ibn Uthaymi mentions one of the reasons why we only touch the two Yemeni corners is because they are the only two corners that are still the way Ibrahim السلام, built the Kaaba. The other corners are there because Quraysh did not have enough money to continue or to complete building the Kaaba the way Ibrahim السلام, had built the Kaaba. So the corners that are uh, present on the other side of the Kaaba, they're not necessarily the actual corners of the Kaaba. Um, the, the Kaaba was a little wider than it is than it is nowadays. So that's one, touching the Rukn al-Yamani and Hajar al-Aswad. The second is the shoes that Abdullah ibn Umar was wearing. Now the shoes that he was wearing were leather shoes. Uh, these leather shoes were um, exposed to the feet, so they were more like sandals. And these shoes did not have any fur. So they were leather shoes without fur, okay? And even though Abdullah ibn Umar was not asked about why he washed his feet in the shoe, he added that he washed his feet in the shoe because he saw the Prophet ﷺ washing the feet, his feet in the shoe. And uh, Imam al-Bukhari mentions here that he doesn't wipe all over the shoe because Abdullah ibn Umar mentioned that he washed his foot in the shoe. Now the fact that he washed his foot in the shoe indicates that um, even though you have on a shoe, you should still wash your shoe. Uh, you should still wash your foot. So you wash your foot in the shoe as long as you feel that your entire foot is getting wet. This is mentioned by a few of the scholars. Whereas you make sure your entire foot is getting wet because um, what's wajib, what's a, an obligation in wudu is to wash your foot. So as long as you feel like your entire foot is getting wet, then it's permissible to wash your foot in the shoe and you don't necessarily have to take off the shoe. Which is also an indicator that it is not um, an obligation to wipe or to be able to put your hand all the way around the foot or to wash the, the foot with your, um, with your hand, which is the opinion of some of the scholars in the Madhab al-Malikiyah. Um, it is an obligation to when you wash your foot to make sure your hand goes all the way around the foot. And the fact that Abdullah ibn Umar said the Prophet ﷺ would wash his foot um, in the shoe indicates that he was not necessarily putting his hand all the way around, all the way around the foot. Which is what's um, important for uh, the conversation, which is how to wash uh, your foot in wudu. So, uh, the manner in which you, a person would wash his foot in wudu is you make sure the entire foot is washed or gets wet um, from the ankles all the way down to the foot. Now, if a person's foot is dirty, that's different. Um, it would be advised to make sure you clean the foot as much as possible. The third thing is that the uh, Prophet ﷺ would color his hair with saffron, which is yellow with a, a yellow color. 
So where he had gray hairs, he would put saffron or yellow colors, uh, right, the color yellow in it to take away some of the gray hair. Now there's discussion on whether or not it's permissible to use saffron because there are conflicting or apparently conflicting a hadith or uh, understandings on this, whether or not to, uh, it's permissible to use saffron. And the correct opinion, Allahu A'lam, is that a person who is in ihram, it's not permissible for them to wear um, yellow cloth or cloth that has been colored with saffron, colored yellow. But outside of that, it's permissible. And the last thing is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam for those who are in Mecca, um, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is to make ihram or to make the intention for hajj on the eighth day of the hijjah, which is Yawm al We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And in this hadith, there's also the benefit that Abdullah ibn Umar, he loved things just because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved them. And Abdullah ibn Umar is one of the companions that was known to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, in detail. So there were things that Abdullah ibn Umar loved just because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved them. So Abdullah ibn Umar followed the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And within that is an example for us that if we claim to love the Prophet wasallam, then we should be the ones who follow him as much to show our love. So to show that you love him more, you should be following him more. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا ونصرنا على القوم الكافرين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه